Shalom everyone, my name is Devora Kalik and I'm with Bless Israel Network and I want to welcome you to this week's A Taste of Torah where we will be studying today the Torah portion Vayechel which is in Exodus chapter 35 verse 1 through Exodus 38 20 and Vayachel means he assembled. Now this week is actually a double Torah portion and the second one that is normally read is Pikude, which means accountings, but we're not going to be talking about that Torah portion today. We can't cover everything. So um, we're gonna get started. And last year, I spent quite a bit of time on and on last year's Vayachel talking about Bezalel, who is the master craftsman who was appointed by Hashem to build the tabernacle, the Mishkan in the wilderness. And we finished up that video, that, that uh, discussion on the Torah portion, talking about the meaning of his name. It actually means in the shadow of God or in the shadow of the Lord. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to look at it. It's a heartbeat of the Torah episode and the title of it is, Are You the Shadow of God? Bezalel is such an interesting person. So before we actually get to what I want to talk about in this week's Torah portion, I'd like to share with you something else about his name. And first I'll give you a little bit of background information. I've shared this before, but some of you may be new to the idea of a level of interpretation of the Torah, of the scriptures that is below the surface. You could almost say it's a clue or even sowed, secret. <clears throat> I want to explain that it is a valid method of interpreting the scriptures. It's called gematria and it's widely accepted among um, the Jewish people, the ancient sages. It's even gaining popularity today in modern times among lots of Bible teachers because they realize you can discover some amazing truths that are hidden there. Very simply, gematria is the study of the numerical value of the letters or words in the Bible. And um, we find hidden truths when we are able to connect words or phrases or whatever with the same numerical values. And they have um, uh, things to teach us. These words seemingly are unrelated except for the fact that they share the same numerical value. And of course, putting a numerical value on the Hebrew letters is valid because until there was a no, uh, an Arabic numeral system, the letters served as numbers. And this is still true in the Tanakh, in the, in the Jewish scriptures today, where you have letters representing chapter designations and verse designations. Okay, so in the Hebrew alphabet, every letter has a numerical value. In Judaism, the rabbis and the Torah scholars have long believed that the letters of the Hebrew alphabet have great spiritual truths to teach us, in particular, about our God. A gentleman named Grant Luton wrote a book called In His Own Words, and he said this regarding the letter Aleph, which is our, corresponds to our letter A in our alphabet. He said the letter Aleph, which you'll understand the connection in just a moment to the, uh, because I'm going to connect Bezalel with the Aleph. Aleph in its exalted position at the head of the alphabet is considered to be the repository of all of the alphabet's wisdom. Aleph is much more than just the equivalent of the letter A or merely the first in a, in a series of letters. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is considered by Jewish theologians to actually be made in the image of God and is thus the Lord and master of all the other letters. 
a father, if you will, with 21 children because there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. That is comes from Rabbi Michael Monk's book called The Wisdom of the Hebrew Alphabet. In fact, the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph and Beit, um, Grant Luton points out, spell the word Av, which is father. Thus, the teaching that all things begin with God, the father of all. In order to really gain an appreciation of gematria, we need to delve a little bit deeper into the head of the alphabet, the letter Aleph. In the creation story in Sefer Bereshit, or Genesis, there are certain key places where the letter Aleph appears. And according to the Jewish sages, this letter represents God. Interestingly, El, which is one of the names of God and means God, has a gematria value, a num numerical value of 31. And the 31st letter in the Torah, in the book of Bereshit, is an aleph, an aleph. Elohim, which also means God, but has an allusion to him more as a judge, has a gematria of 86. And the 86th letter of the Torah is an aleph. Av, we've already mentioned, Aleph Beit is how it's spelled, means father, and has a gematria of three. Can you guess what the third letter of the Torah is? That's right, it's an Aleph. The yud he vav he the holy name, which we don't believe in pronouncing because no one really knows the exact pronunciation of it, has a value of 26. And the 26th letter of the Torah is an Aleph. The shortened version of the holy name, yud He, which, you know, is pronounced Yah, and is at the end of many Hebrew names, the, is the 15, is, has a gematria of 15. And the 15th letter of the Torah is an Aleph. <clears throat> now, the odds of this happening are astronomical and it, it, that it happens by chance. It, it's astronomical and this really demonstrates to us that our God, our Father, has encoded himself in the very scriptures. Well, we were talking about Bezalel. The numerical value, the gematria of his name is 153. Guess what the 153rd letter of the Torah is? It is an Aleph. So this should reveal to us something unique and special about Bezalel. He doesn't, and if you listen to our video from last year, you'll see that he isn't exactly um, just a human being. He is a type and shadow of, I believe, our Messiah. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and turn to Exodus 35, verses 4 and 5 in this week's Torah portion. And it says, Moses assembled the entire assembly of the children of Israel and said to them, these are the things that Hashem commanded to do them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it goes on. Actually, that's starting at verse 1, and here is verse 4. Moses said to the entire assembly of the children of Israel, saying, This is the word that Hashem has commanded, saying, Take from yourselves a portion for Hashem. Everyone whose heart motivates him shall bring it as the gift for Hashem, gold, silver, copper. So, we're going to focus on this verse for a few minutes. Um, it says, take from yourselves a portion. This in Hebrew is, kechu metchem tchuma. This is a corporate commandment to everyone, all of Israel. The verb take is in the imperative or the command form, kechu. And it's an offering, a tchuma. 
Truma comes from the root word Ram, which means exalted or high. This offering that they are taking is an exaltation, showing us that it is a spiritual activity that they are taking this offering for the Mishkan, for building the Mishkan. The next thing we want to pay attention to is the words whose heart motivates him. And that is Nadiv Libo and is in verse 5. It really means a generous heart. The word Nadiv today in modern Hebrew is, means generous. The word generous, this word or some form of this word, Nadiv, appears five times in this parasha. In chapter 35, verse 5, verse 21, verse 22, and twice in verse 29. And in verse, in chapter 35, verse 20 word, the word generous is in conjunction with the word spirit, ruho. It says everyone whose spirit motivated him. But the Hebrew actually says this, asher nesao libo vechol asher nadva ruho. Who carries his heart by his spirit. So it does mean generous, but it's saying who carries this generousness in his heart by his spirit, by his rucho. God wants us to give with generosity. That shouldn't surprise us because he's so generous. He wants us to give also with a cheerful heart. We see that in the Brit Hadashah. He loves a cheerful giver. He wants the act of giving to others and to him to come from our hearts. The word wise-hearted is Lev Chacham, and it's used seven times in this very short section of scripture. In chapter 35, verse 10, 25, 35, and then in 36, 1, and twice in 36, 2, and then in verse 8, chapter 36, verse 8. The act of giving is wisdom. So we have these three combinations of words, Nadiv Libo, which means generosity, Chacham Lev, which means wise-hearted, and Nachva Rucho, which means a generous spirit. What, or Nadva, I should say, Nadva Rucho, which means generous spirit. What is the common denomination, or common denominator in all three of these? Hashem wants us to be cheerful givers givers of our time, our talents, givers of our money. We are to be a people that has generosity in our spirits. And by giving to others, we are giving Truma, an exalted offering to our great God, who is also, as I already mentioned, so very generous with us. He doesn't ask us to do anything he doesn't do himself. How do we truly serve Hashem and reveal him to the world? By giving charity, which is also tzedakah in Hebrew. And we give this to others by giving wholeheartedly of ourselves, of our time, our talents, and our money. And we need to do it all with a generous spirit. We need to be people who carry our hearts by our spirit. This means being gracious and expressing gratitude. This is how we exalt the God of Israel and the name of our Messiah. If all the disciples of Yeshua would do this, we would turn the world upside down for our King and we would restore the name of Yeshua in Israel. Our fruit would speak 
and no one would be able to argue with it. As some good Jew has always said, just do it. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you have enjoyed this week's A Taste of Torah and want to ask if you will please seriously consider partnering with us so that we can continue to bring you these teachings at no charge and in addition that we can continue to bring to you our one-of-a-kind special program called Revelation to the Nations where we are interviewing our Israeli brethren here in the land and helping you to make a direct connection with them so that you can support them and um, pray for them, etc. Please go to our website, www.blessisraelnetwork.com and you can click on the donate tab and make a tax deductible donation to our ministry. In addition to that, we'd like to suggest, if you haven't done so already, that you please get connected to our Facebook page. You could like us and then you'll be able to follow us in your Facebook news feed. And also you can um, find our videos to our programs, Revelation to the Nations and this one and others that we provide to you. Well, friends, I want to wish you a very special Shabbat Shalom. May it be filled with the Shalom, the peace, and the joy of our Messiah. And until next time, Litraot. We'll see you later.